Well, hey guys, today I'm gonna to talk all about crepey skin. I get a ton of questions, what can be done about crepey skin, how to prevent it, why do I have it, etc. So hopefully I'll cover all of that in today's video. Crepey skin is different from run-of-the-mill wrinkles and is not always necessarily related to aging. It tends to involve a larger area of skin and it represents loss of the supportive framework underneath those areas of affected skin and as a result, you have thin, fragile skin. The number one cause of crepey skin is ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Even ultraviolet radiation from the sun that comes through windows while you're indoors can contribute to this because those rays, those UVA rays that come through the glass, they penetrate deeply into the skin and they destroy the elastin fibers in the skin. And those fibers are what help give recoil and snap to your skin. Extreme fluxes in weight, so a rapid weight loss or a rapid weight gain with stretching of the skin very quickly, that can result in crepey skin. Third reason for crepey skin is a lack of moisture. Moisturizers help by delivering hydration to the skin and reducing what's called transepidermal water loss out of the skin and they help your skin hold on to its natural moisture much better. And a medication that can cause your skin to become crepey is prednisone. The reason for this is prednisone, which is a systemic steroid given to markedly reduce inflammation. It impairs uh, some of the biology of wound healing and collagen formation. And on with long-term use of prednisone, you get crepey skin. Smoking is a major cause of crepey skin. Smoking, like UV, destroys the elastic tissue in the skin and results in crepiness. Sleep deprivation is one that may surprise you but has been shown to be associated with more prominent signs of skin aging because your body can't recuperate from inflammation throughout the day and your skin deep down suffers. Pollution is a major contributing factor to skin aging overall as well as crepey skin. Pollutants on the skin contribute to inflammation through generation of free radicals. Uh, another one that comes to mind is just poor nutrition, having a, a poor diet, not, eat, not getting your recommended servings of fruits and vegetables will show up on your skin later on down the road. Diets rich in smoked meats or processed sugary foods like packaged pastries can set you up for more crepey skin. The reason for this is something called advanced glycation end products. These foods uh, create these compounds that deposit in the uh, collagen framework of your skin and create an inflammatory response that shoes up that framework and can yield wrinkling and crepey skin. And whenever I talk about processed sugary foods, I always get a comment, somebody will say, well, what about the sugars and fruits? The sugars and fruits are fine. I mean, I say that tongue in cheek because I do know that there are some people out there who consume like 900 bananas a day, and I'm not so sure about that. I just don't know. But we do know that consuming at least the recommended servings of fruits and vegetables a day helps your skin respond to environmental stressors much better, including ultraviolet radiation and pollution. But what can you buy in the store that will help treat existing crepey skin? Probably the most effective thing that you could pursue is going to be a vitamin A derivative, either a retinol, retinaldehyde, or a retinoid. Vitamin A derivatives in general are established ingredients for improving the deeper, the structure of the deeper layers of the skin. And so we use them a lot of times for things like cellulite to try and get it better. With consistent use, I mean, we're talking a, a year, you will start to see some improvement in skin firmness with using a topical vitamin A derivative. There are thousands upon thousands of retinols that you can buy in the store. As far as retinols that you can buy in the store, my personal favorites are the CeraVe Resurfacing Retinol as well as the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair a fragrance-free one. They make one with fragrance and one without fragrance. Choose the fragrance-free one. Those are, those are reasonable options, and I say those because they come from large companies that have a lot of R&D and have a long track record of studying vitamin A biology in their R&D labs. Um, so I have a lot more confidence in those. And then I also recommend the Aven Retinaldehyde. That is kind of a step above retinol in terms of it's just a little bit more bioavailable. 
And in my opinion, adapalene is probably the best choice because it's the most active. And we do have some studies showing that it is helpful for the improvement of wrinkles and fine lines. So that's a logical choice. And the other thing though, that you can buy over the counter or that can help improve the appearance of existing crepey skin is going to be an alpha hydroxy acid moisturizing product. The reason for this is that alpha hydroxy acids, which include things like glycolic acid, lactic acid, act as skin hydrators or humectants. So they help hold water into, onto the surface layer of the skin. And with consistent use, they can help in improving skin texture. So at this point, I'm gonna save you guys a lot of money don't buy crepey race you may be wondering about that it's like this product that they sell on ulta or a series of products and like 78 bucks for a cream yeah skip that if you have crepey skin on your body go with eucerin body creams and lotions they most of them many of them have alpha hydroxy acids here i have the advanced repair lotion this has ceramides in it as well as alpha hydroxy acid i believe it has yeah lactic acid and urea i mean this is going to get you this is going to get you the results that you should expect from using topical alpha hydroxy acid for the improvement of crepey skin more so than anything by crepey race crepey race is just a series of moisturizer shea butter based moisturizers with dill in them like okay like are we pickles no um and there's nothing wrong with shea butter as a matter of fact if you're using a, a shea butter moisturizer keep using it that's a good moisturizer to use but you my point is like you don't need to like run after the 78 dollar shea butter moisturizer i mean shea butter is pretty cheap like they think that if they just put crepe in their title of their product then it'll be more appealing to people looking to treat that specific thing but they're basically just selling you something a more expensive version of something that exists like you can go into cvs and buy the 360 beauty lotion and get a better moisturizer for a few bucks than the crepey ray so don't waste your money on that but at, at the very least moisturizing consistently can improve the appearance but choosing a moisturizer with alpha hydroxy acid is good as far as the face because this product is for the body as far as the face, I recommend Alpha Care that you also can buy at Ulta. They make a cream and a lotion that are alpha hydroxy acids. But yeah, you can't go wrong with Alpha Care. And then I'm, I'm gonna give a shout out actually to Dermatology. You guys know how much I love their sunscreens. I mean, I wear them every day. I'm wearing the tinted one right now. This is their advanced retexturizer and this has glycolic acid in it. And this is really good. It's fragrance-free, cruelty-free. Prescription creams that will help with crepey skin is gonna be tretinoin. And that is the most potent topical vitamin A uh, that is only available by prescription here in the States at least. All right, stuff your dermatologist can do for you besides prescribe you tretinoin include some procedures. Although currently with the pandemic, we're not really doing things like this. But um, I'll just talk about them here. And I, I've talked about them in other videos. They include things like radio frequency, ultrasound, and pulse light. Um, these devices, basically they deliver focused energy to the deeper layers of your skin that can stimulate collagen production and kind of firm the skin over time. Um, so it helps with collagen remodeling. These particular devices that we use in office they don't yield particularly great results for crepey skin on the body, like your arms or your thighs. Any, anywhere where you have skin attached to large muscle groups, it tends to be underwhelming. These devices work best for crepiness on the neck or on the face. You may be wondering about those at-home devices, like the new face. You know, you certainly can try those. They're not going to be as effective as in-office procedures, but right now, we're not doing these things. So it's certainly something that you can try. I don't know, I tend to not recommend those because they're expensive and it's hard for me to predict which ones are gonna be good and which ones aren't. Another procedure that we're obviously not currently doing right now that works really well to improve the appearance of crepiness, especially on the hands and then the body, is filler. Obviously, just putting volume into the deeper layer where you've lost it. And then if you have experienced a rapid changes in weight, like after weight loss surgery, and you have a lot of crepey, saggy skin, most often that requires cosmetic uh, surgery, plastic surgery to, to remove that. There's not a, that is not a cream or a device 
or a filler that's gonna correct that. It's, it's typically gonna be plastic surgery. So those are things both that you can do at home or that you can pursue once pandemic is over and we're doing more elective procedures. Those are things that you can pursue to fix, correct, improve the appearance of existing crepey skin. But what about prevention? Prevention and maintenance uh, of what you currently have is key. And you can do that with a very simple, basic, minimal skincare routine of sunscreen to protect you from those UV rays that are destroying the deeper layers of your skin. You can do that by cleansing your face at the end of the day and removing your makeup, as well as those dirt and pollutants that settle on the skin and contribute to free radicals. And you can do it by putting on a moisturizer to help seal in transepidermal water loss and keep your skin hydrated, glowy, etc. So just a simple skincare routine, those three things will go a long way. Beyond that, your nutrition. Making sure you at least get your recommended servings of fruits and vegetables a day. The reason why that's so important, you guys, is that fruits and vegetables that are high in carotenoids, they can actually raise what's called the minimal erythematous dose. That is the amount of ultraviolet radiation that is required on your skin exposure that is required for you to begin to have some of the visible signs of skin damage. So it can raise that, meaning it, it basically helps give you a little bit of extra protection against environmental stressors. Plus it's anti, and part of an anti-inflammatory diet, which can help with other chronic diseases in theory. Um, so eat your fruits and vegetables. If you smoke, quit. That's going to make a profound difference, not only in your skin and cosmetically, but in your total body health and your longevity on this planet beyond what sunscreen could offer. So I definitely put smoking cessation above just about everything else. Exercise is very important. Exercising regularly, getting your heart rate up, good for your cardiovascular health and allows for better circulation to heal the skin and support the deeper layers of the skin and regeneration, really important, goes a long way. Getting sleep, getting good sleep, do not blow it up. Don't be one of those people who's like, I don't need a lot of sleep, I don't need a lot of sleep. Meanwhile, your skin is like, yes you do, yes you do, yeah. Focus on getting those good eight hours of sleep if you can, really important and find ways to cope with your stress. Really difficult though. I mean, yeah, you can't predict what's gonna stress you out. That's the other thing, like, you can't plan for certain things in life, but you can have habits in place that give you some sense of control of your life and make you able to make more objective decisions in the face of stress and not go into panic mode. That will then feed into how well you sleep at night, how well you recover, all of these things. So stress management is paramount. But I hope these tips and suggestions and overview and whatnot were helpful to you guys who are coping with this. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.